Bronwyn Winter Phoenix First an artist then everything else An extremely poised and polite person from Edinburgh Scotland is finding her way back home to doing arts Owner of a successful content agency Bronwyn illustrates not just great designs but also a path that we all can take to follow your passions no matter where you are in life just get back home hello guys everyone welcome to the gist of it podcast today i have a fantastic guest all the way from edinburgh scotland bronwyn winter phoenix uh, i was welcome to the show bronwyn thank you I was really intrigued by your last name Phoenix and then I saw your agency's name is also Phoenix Content Marketing. Uh, is it your family name? It's not. No. I was a journalist. Okay. A long time ago. And there was another journalist or another reporter with exactly the same name as myself. Yeah. Okay. And then my first fiction book was being published and I uh. thought if I'm going to change my name any any time i need to do it right now yeah so that was in november 2007 mm. so yeah <laughs> so you so any reason why you picked phoenix because i was i i teach a course on, on uh, john dunn's poetry and um, he may, i was in fact just a couple of days ago and we were talking about the phoenix riddle and the phoenix bird that is beyond any gender or sexes and it rises from the ashes keeps rising again and again is that that the metaphor you loved i think so yeah i i really like the name yeah and also i started like an online magazine type thing that had sort of phoenix wings and it all kind of came together really yeah yeah i love the wings uh, logo of your of your website and your agency fantastic yeah. i I noticed that the first line of your about us section of your LinkedIn profile says you're the female John Wick of content marketing. What's that analogy yes. about? I'm exceptionally thorough. I won't stop until the job is done, but I'm still not impervious to being hit by the odd car. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to say. Okay, part human, part superhuman. Okay. <laughs> amazing isn't it i was just we were just having this chat i would like to share this with our viewers that when we first when i first came across your profile it wasn't anything to do with your marketing content marketing agency i didn't even know until days later when i checked your profile and i was drawn to your illustrations and your art so initially i, th I thought you're an artist and now just 5 minutes ago you told me that you just very recently started doing it and uh, so tell us all about that how how a content marketer a novelist uh, starts doing art well i'd always been into art as a child i used to win art competitions i've always mm. been very creative and um, yeah it just i had a bad experience at school and my art teacher when i got to a certain level uh he, he wasn't very supportive and he 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 basically gave me quite a low grade or like a, i think it was equivalent of a c okay and then he said to my parents that he'd looked at my work after that and i really should have deserved an a but he wasn't going to change it uh, and uh that really really put me off i think I, i wanted my whole life to be about art and if i could only get to a certain grade then you know it was going to ruin everything and <laughs> you know <laughs> the things that the things that you go through in your head when you're a teenage girl with zero confidence it, yeah so that pushed me more towards the writing side of things so i've had three published fiction of fiction novels and um galaxy award nominated for the third and yeah I, i've just been writing for such a long time started my agency out of necessity to begin with 
Um, that's been going for about seven years. And for seven years, I've been in what feels like survival mode in that I've not had a TV pilot to pitch. I've not been working on a fiction novel because I've got an emotional block. Um, so I just got to a certain point where I was really stressed with the agency stuff. And my great aunt died a year before. She was an artist. She left me all of her stuff. So I had everything in the house. And I just thought one day, sod it, I'm going to go and paint. <laughs> and I did. And it was just the most freeing thing in the world. Like I've never felt more like myself. And now I never want to stop. So I've been getting commissions. I've been painting in oils and acrylics. I've been working in inks. I've got an iPad and I'm doing digital illustrations. And it's just the best thing. So I'm now a student as well. The course that I've, I've just been, I've just got an unconditional offer to study at the course of my choice. And after a year, that should get me into second or third year of uni. Wow. So I'm, I'm just really excited. And I, I really, all, all I want to talk about is art. I don't want to talk about uh, marketing anymore <laughs> in this call. <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? I mean, we, you, that, we're doing, we're doing a project uh, that I mentioned to you. It's very relevant to what you just told me about your school. The idea behind the project is that we want kids to express themselves in art and with writing. It's so important. It's, 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 it's not part of the curriculum anywhere in the world, apart from some really exceptional schools. So, so we are, we're getting students to write and illustrate and do whatever art they want to do. And we'll put together books based on whatever they submit, uh, you know, the sub publishable uh, stuff. But every kid will get recognition from us. So we're putting together a team of people like yourselves. Just one line from Bronwyn to a random kid in, in India probably can change his or her life. That's what uh, happened to me when I was in grade six. I was around 10 years old. And I still remember that one hug from my English teacher that she said, you've written a brilliant essay. Fantastic. That's it. And she probably did it with everyone. But I heard it and it stuck and it made me an author and publisher and whatever I am today. It's because of that one line of recognition. So what you were not given and it, it made you really, you know, subconsciously back in your in, in your mind and soul you you wanted to be an artist and lack of that recognition you didn't know i mean we don't know kids don't know better if you don't recognize their talents if you don't give them confidence where else the confidence will come from if not from teachers and parents in that in that group so now you coming back home which i which i feel is a brilliant a uh, way to put it. I also use art and music in a similar manner, but differently. I'll, I'll share my pro uh, process very quickly. I was not trained in formal music. I was not trained in formal art, even though my family has uh, classical trained musicians. Everyone is better than me. My mother, my mother's sister, my grandfather, uh, my cousins. I never learned. Then I ended up in Liverpool. <laughs> when I was 20 and I was used to play guitar. So I started learning and playing guitar and being involved with the music scene. And that gave me a lot of confidence that you don't need to be formally trained or you don't need anyone else's validation. You can pick up a guitar, learn a tune and go and perform in front of five people in a pub. That's it. That doesn't matter. Gave me a lot of confidence. Now back home when I'm in India, just like you, I also run a small agency. And the life happens all the time. So my only way of escaping and distracting is music. And I use it like meditation. And it has saved me from life-threatening situations. It's, it's so, you know, only you, I think you can understand it very well. You can empathize with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So brilliant. Everyone should have some kind of a distraction, people call it hobby or something that takes you away from your daily grind into that zone. And everyone must have that. Everyone must be taught to do that. 
So you're so lucky. I think you're so fortunate that you hang, hung on to your, to your dream, to your passion, and you could come back to it. It's so great, isn't it? So what do you, what would you say, a ten-year-old kid in school that no, nobody recognizes his or her talents? She's just scribbling or drawing away, and uh, just like anyone else, what would you tell that child now? Um, actually, someone posted something really quite significant uh. the other day on Facebook, actually. And it, it's made me thought of, think of this, actually, because it was about how you don't have to necessarily be the best at something yes. to enjoy it and to take away experiences from it and to just gain new skills and, and have those experiences. You know, you, you you don't have to let the fact that you're not maybe the best or even particularly talented at something mm. stop you from trying it mm. and, you know, from taking away what you what you can from it. That's a brilliant think, message, isn't it? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it out and show it to everyone. <laughs> you know, just that, it's, because that's it. Kids are in, in a world full of competition. You've got to be best or... You know, uh, I mean, it's, it's slightly different in India because anything you do has to be career or vocation specific. So if you're drawing, illustrating, for example, when I was, I, I wanted to be a writer. So I studied literature and I went to England to study literature and nobody could understand why the hell, who studies literature? Okay, what kind of a job will you get out of it? Then are you really good? Are you really good to, you know, to spend so much money and go to a different country? What would you do with it? I just wanted to study. I just wanted to read great books, you know, be in that. And I absolutely enjoyed my time in Liverpool studying literature and films and then exploding music. So you don't have to be the best in whatever you're doing. Sometimes kids know it. We force them to forget it. I think this yeah, one the, message the would be like... Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's personal development and you should always be working to better yourself at something. You don't want to just stay on the same level for like 50 years, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it wasn't for me, it wasn't a dream that I held on to. I thought, you know, I'm a writer now. Yeah. I am just going to keep doing it and yeah. keep you know, pushing out novels and then writing whatever I could, I'd completely just dropped mm. the art thing. I, I, I used to look at some art and think, you know, oh, I could, I could maybe go back to painting at some point. I might do this. And I might do that. But my, my partner, who I've known for seven years, yeah, he had no idea what I could do with my art. Yeah. You know, it's such a surprise to him to, to find me painting in the kitchen one day. <laughs> 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 Who is uh, that on your screen? My, my daughter is peeping in. Avni, come here. Come, come for a sec. She's, she's really excited with your aquarium. Come here, come this side. Come, come this say time. hi. Say hi. <laughs> say hello. 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 <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Avni. Avni. Say it louder. Avni. She writes and she she uh, she zoomed all our office desks with color. And oh, wow. <laughs> the white white desks. I'll see you around, Avni. Okay. All the white desks have been you know after office because my, our office is in in our home, uh, first and second floor of the house, and she comes after after school and it's just <laughs> all the desks are covered in color so i let yes. i let her be i let her be i don't uh, judge or instruct her to do it any specific way mm -hmm. so yeah it's uh, it's amazing because recognition and i'll i'll play some some of my flute later in the show for you because i'm self taught okay. and i'm learning a classical system of music uh, which is, which is, I always felt that I won't, I would never be able to do it without the teacher and without years and years of training. But I think I'm getting, getting, I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, there is no one else to judge. So, 
coming back to your illustration so you yes. were born and brought up in edinburgh or have you lived anywhere else as well i was born about 20 30 minutes outside of edinburgh okay so when my parents would take me to edinburgh i would always love it so much be so excited yeah. and it's still my favorite city in the world it's my favorite place to live i'm so lucky to live here um beautiful. in the it's past amazing. i've lived in huh it's amazing it's amazing the number of times i've been there it it we had a similar fort city in 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 um, in merseyside chester you might might have heard of it. chester the fort the walled city okay so, yes i have uh, heard of it i think that's yeah. the the place in the uh, holy <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's just uh, so edinburgh is very beautiful we went to edinburgh and glasgow i didn't like glasgow that much but edinburgh I is in glasgow as well i didn't like it very much either <laughs> yes it's too metropolitan for me uh glass edinburgh is is the real it gives you you know it takes you back centuries it's so beautiful yeah i i lived in edinburgh for a couple of years uh i was i was in a bad relationship though now I, i was right in the center of town like okay. literally on argyle street and okay i should have loved it Uh, but I didn't because I was miserable so <laughs> I associate Glasgow with with all that stuff. Um I've also lived in LA briefly as well and I was I had a TV pilot I was trying to sell. Uh it looked like it was going somewhere and then it fell through because that's what happens in LA things just fall through all the time. <laughs> it happens, it happens to Tim Minchin actually. I think he spent like four years on a project and then it was just gone. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's a crazy oh, different okay. world quite it, quite it, contrasting yeah. to edinburgh and mm-hmm. i you know i would like to compliment you in on uh, maybe it's the art but your whole countenance the way you speak your voice um, your presence is so calming it's <laughs> so um, it's like it's like you're in a meditative state like a yogi and <laughs> it uh, it's definitely the art it's it's brought you Thank home you. it's brought you I home. do feel I feel like that I feel yeah. like you you know when you you're focused on any an agency for example and you're yeah. putting all your effort into that <laughs> and if something the tiniest little thing goes wrong yeah. that's all you've got to obsess about mm. and it bothers you so yeah. much and nowadays I don't care I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Something can go wrong, it doesn't matter. Cuz I found my purpose and yes. I'm living for now. Mm-hmm. I'm living for me. It's uh, have you seen the uh, the idol or the photograph or the picture of Shiva? The Hindu god Shiva. Um, the one the I one with the seen... the one with the snakes. you know and uh, sitting I in a meditative her, I'm, more, i'm more associate her with the you know final fantasy <laughs> <laughs> version that's, of her that's not <laughs> shiva that's that's no, the not, <laughs> that's the god that, that's the goddess kali that's the female uh, goddess kali in the form of shiva is the masculine masculine force he sits in a meditative trance and he has snakes around his body and so i was recently explaining this symbolism to to a friend in england that why the hell is he got snakes around his body what does that say it's not as simple but shiva talks about a term a concept called detachment in sanskrit it's called vairagya and so shiva epitomizes that no matter what's happening in your life you might be covered in snakes you know situations and people they're attached to you yeah but you don't let them affect you that's the stance that's the meditative state i am in so detachment is not escaping or ignoring or rejecting things in your life like your agency or day to day things but they no longer affect you you are at a at at some objective distance 
and that's what happens with meditation and art is meditation so it's you found your home you're so lucky and fortunate i'm i'm glad yeah, we're talking i feel that so much i do um it's it's so incredible because you're almost like a yogi you are awakened <laughs> and you should <laughs> you should uh, feel really great about it so let's I I, because we are we both are marketing people and i don't know you don't like to talk about it but i'd still take you back to how you started the the phoenix content marketing agency and why and the logistics and the you know the problems of starting up uh, tell me all about that because i i i went through such a similar phase so i would like to know about that okay so for me i was self employed from 2008 when i left my job as a reporter and my first novel was published and since then i've been i was writing everything and anything mm. to pay the bills and i found i could write about basically any subject as yeah. long as i had the information yeah. in front of me yeah so i started just picking up as much work as i could online i was i was picking up right like silly little jobs at maybe like 10 p.m. at night just because that was extra money yeah. you know and i started wondering why some companies were looking for types of content they were why why am i writing this basically and i got my hubspot inbound and content marketing certification mm. and started working for some agencies still self employed still as freelancer mm. I became content manager for one of them and it was just it was me and mainly this other guy who who ran his own small agency and all these mistakes and things that he made uh, it would have just like if the clients had known it would have just <laughs> it would have been a disaster you know so I was like I can do a lot better and get paid a lot more at the same time mm. um so i was thinking about it and then also it i was kind of forced into it because this guy he he put so much focus onto things like it didn't matter like logos and less into getting clients um and yeah he, the only client he got one year i think was his sister <laughs> his sister uh, bought our old flat yeah. from us and we just signed the mortgage on a three-story townhouse in edinburgh okay. and then she cancelled as a client so he couldn't afford to pay for even his own content never mind hers or anyone else's so i i just signed the mortgage i had i had bills to pay and I, I started a secret agency. It was a okay. secret one. Um, <clears throat> he's gonna be, he, might, he might watch this. I really hope he doesn't. <laughs> it, it was a secret agency. I but didn't tell you, anybody. You have, you have to credit him for getting you started. You know, he, yeah, he opened my eyes to yes, so much. Yes. And it, it's down to him that I realized I could start mm. my own agency mm. myself, you know. So it... <laughs> It was a weird situation. Mm. I, I, he didn't know for a long time. And I, I was really lucky in that my first client that I got with the agency was specializing in interactive touchscreen experiences. Okay. And they worked with some huge clients. Oh. And it was just so exciting. It was more exciting than writing about things like boilers and artificial grass, <laughs> you know? And that's why we kind of niched down into the mm. AR, VR, and immersive experiences sort yes. of industries. Just because I, I loved it. It was, it's for someone who is more creative and not particularly sort of as businessy as I sh maybe should be for running an agency. Mm. It was something that I could get excited about. Mm. Um, so, so so yeah how did you fund it how did you fund it like i mean how could you I hire fund... when did you hire your first staff the office and stuff we built up our team really gradually 
Mm. It's just all about having very dependable core members, I think. And just, we started off on a shoestring. We, we didn't get any funding. Um, you know, it, it just gradually grew. We, we, I think we even started our website without getting like a proper license for it. We <laughs> just kind of ju okay. just did things as we could, you know. Um, but now, now we're paying for it properly, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But um, it got to a point where it was like probably over a year in. Um, the guy, I, I was still doing a little bit of freelancing for the other agency. And he was like, one day, Bronwyn, why don't you start your own agency? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> he knows now. So yeah, but I, I don't know why I was so worried to be honest. I mean, it was something that it, I was perfectly, I, I'd not signed anything to stop me from doing it. I didn't steal any clients. Yeah, I did everything all above board, yeah. but I think when you have bills to pay and you're a woman and you know mm. your whole life depends on things going okay you don't want to rock the boat you gotta do what you gotta do yeah it's it's uh, it's yeah. nothing to feel guilty about um so it's i always loved uh, these bootstrapping agency stories in my entire career i've i've never worked for i, I did part-time jobs in england but mm -hmm. I've been back in India for 10 years. I've never worked for anyone. I don't know whether anyone, anyone would hire me. So I never tried. So we have bootstrapped everything. We started our publishing house with the first book and uh, then the second, then the third, uh, bringing in the revenues back into it, taking very little salaries, mm -hmm. living a completely frugal bootstrap life. It's hard, but if, if that's the only way, that's the only way. You, you, you got to do it. And then this agency. Uh, so it's, but I do you think it's harder for, for, for a woman. It was harder for you. Come. Um, it depends. I do think it's generally harder for women. Hmm. Uh, but this marketing, creative marketing, content marketing, and you know, heading it, being the boss, it's it can be intimidating for for a woman. You know, I th I still think it's primarily it still, I think seventy thirty it's still male dominated. Uh, yeah, I do sometimes feel like people don't take me that seriously. Hmm. Uh. And I, I can kind of see why, because I'm I'm this creative person who always turns up in like dresses and has her <laughs> lipstick okay. and some weird jewelry on and yeah. like and says Tiki Queen, yeah. you know. <laughs> and not the business suits, um, you know, and not the pinstripes. Uh, yeah, talking and apparently brutal. I look quite young as well. Yeah, I'm and told. you and you so you so polite. I mean that brutal uh, tone and you know matter of fact cut to the chase i don't think you could ever do it you can ever do it uh, cutting to the chase and being you know just matter of fact so yeah it's but i think this is this is also the likable quality about you if the person spends time with you i'm sure you must have got this feedback from your clients that eventually yeah, they like I, I you do have, i do yeah. have some lovely clients yeah, yeah. eventually they i think who wouldn't but yes, the stereotyping exists and it is uh, harder uh, for women to break into creative agencies, advertising agencies, marketing. Um, uh, it has felt like an uphill struggle hmm. as well the past seven years or so. It's just felt like I take one step forward and then two steps back. You know, every single part of the content marketing has felt like that art i don't feel like that at all i feel like everything's just coming very naturally and and happening a lot faster than i would have ever expected i'm still trying to get my website together uh prawnandwinterphoenix.com that's still under construction oh, okay uh, and i've got all these art projects and illustration projects like i'm i'm illustrating for a mental health charity at the moment 
mm. health in mind. Mm. And that's a really, really good project to work on because it's all about noticing what's around you, being mindful. So I'm, I'm doing all these nature scenes. I'm doing little bees and little ants and, and people going around their day. And it's just wow. lovely. Oh, we, we, uh, we might be collaborating on something similar because we're putting together these children's stories. Uh, mm. And then we plan to publish a lot of uh, books, primarily done by children, but with, okay. with mentors like you, you know, so uh, they just, they need some guidance in terms of, uh, because in India, I haven't seen really world-class illustrations in children's books. I haven't seen. Okay. I recently went to Bologna Book Fair in Italy. Uh, not recently, it's been four or five years. And I was flabbergasted by the, the beautiful illustrations and artwork there. <clears throat> it's just, I'd never seen something like that in my life. I, I still need, you know, to top that. I can't. But when I was seeing your work and the possibilities, and the great thing about you, Bronwyn, is that this is not your number one uh, revenue earner. It's not, you don't depend upon it to pay your bills. That's such a uh, luxurious privileged position to be in. And that's what, that's what we, are, we are doing it for. So publishing for us is not the revenue earner. Publishing is our mode of expression. Thankfully, the marketing agency pays the bills. So we have to work 10 hours there. But with publishing, with expression, with art, with writing, getting kids to do such stuff, we can afford to do it without expecting much revenue. So Yeah, exactly. And I'm trying to also just get the experience at the moment. Yes. Because um, up until a couple of months ago, I'd never done any kind of digital illustration in my life. Ah. And just, I'm, I'm having, I'm learning so much just by doing things. And it's, it's turning out really well. I think that some of my strongest work has been digital. There's so, so many possibilities, saying, isn't it? Yeah. So it's what I'm too, saying yeah. is so to people right now is, you, you know, you decide what to pay me. You decide yeah. what you think it's worth. And if it's reasonable to me, I'll do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think the greatest master is the one who is forever learning because then you can also share how to learn. That's such a rare skill. Uh, teaching everyone knows, but how to learn. And at this point in your life, if you're still learning, you're still a kid. That's, I think that's where your entire personality comes from. And when I'm learning my flute, I have to be, you know, when I'm taking lessons, I have to be like a kid. Be, be receptive and be willing to accept my mistakes and be told off that you're doing it wrong and it's such a simple thing and you're not able to get it. So it's, yeah. it's, just, it's such an ego, you know, uh, it, it just melts your ego. You have to be just like a kid willing to listen, take feedback and not be offended like a grown up. So mm. I uh, love learning new things. And it's digital is amazing. I, I'm sure you're going to do great things. I've already seen, you've posted something, the, um, that moth, the ladybug. Is it, was it the digital one? Yeah, yeah. yeah? I did a ladybird. I did a jumping spider yes. and an ant. Yes, yeah, those are the digital I got, ones. Yes. I love uh, working in Apple Procreate because it does time lapse automatically yeah. of yeah. everything you do. So I've got videos of everything. And you know, I, I was able to even put those into my, my portfolio for my course. Wow. And within four days of submitting my portfolio, I got an unconditional offer. It was over the moon. Wow. Which university? Where? Well, I'm studying Edinburgh College at okay. the moment. This course is for this course I'm going into in September is a UAL course at Edinburgh okay. College. Okay. And then that should get me into second or third year of university. So University of go, Edinburgh. Okay, Edinburgh. so you'll go to Edinburgh. Yeah, fantastic university. Amazing. Yeah. So you will be going in person, like full time, you think? Yes. Yes, wow. I'll be going. I go on a Thursday evening at the moment okay. to do a portfolio preparation class. 
Uh, I've got that till end of May. Then I'll be going into the UAL in September. Yours is an incredible story that I would share with with the children participating, because after having written novels, worked as a journalist, tried to make your living, then starting your agency. After all that, normally a person is too tired to think of anything new. At this stage, we are normally just pushing our life, slogging away, as they say, and just you know, pay the bills, get over the day, the weeks, the months. You took a break, and I don't know. It was it a moment of epiphany, or was it building over a lot of years? But you came back to art, and now you're going back to uni at this age. I mean, I would, I would do anything to get back to the university uh, at this this age and time. So yours is an incredible story. So when when a ten year old child would hear this. They are already at this stage where they don't have to do anything else. Just learn and express yourself and have fun. You don't have to worry about paying your bills or family or any other responsibility. So just have fun. Why not? Just express. Do stuff that makes you happy. And you, Absolutely. I think, you should talk more about it. You should post more videos on LinkedIn because I would love to see you. I mean, I would pay to see your videos. and your message is so honest so brilliant it's i'm i'm really glad to be talking with you and okay. thankfully your hammer hammer works not started yet i think you can't hear anything i heard a few but they've stopped <laughs> again so <laughs> oh, it's amazing thank you one last question okay where do you see yourself 10 years down the line i know the answer but i would still you might still surprise me I would love to see myself doing more and more and more art. I want to have exhibitions. I I dreamt the other night I was actually doing a really cool exhibition. I had these massive paintings like bigger than I've ever done. The biggest I've done so far has been an A2. But these were massive and they they looked amazing and yeah. It was it was at a really wow. cool sort of convention type venue as well. if you can imagine it with so much clarity and detail it is going to happen and i am sure you just talking about it you're having you can feel it i can see the energy and excitement in your eyes if you can imagine yes. it it's going to happen and and just what i'd say as well to to anybody is it's never too late to start doing something yeah it's never too late to learn yeah and to try something you know yes Yes, it's just we get too bogged down in in life. We feel I don't know why we feel uh, helpless. At any moment of time, we have the choice to not completely quit anything, but still find some time in your days or weeks or months for yourself. I think that we owe that to us. Otherwise, it's it's it is a one it is it it ends up becoming one sorry tale. where you never enjoyed your life and you always just keep remembering your childhood days or the days when we were so your message you know vibrates very much with with what i believe in personally and i as i told you it has saved me from life threatening situation it has saved me in the most difficult years of my life in the last 10 years and um, so it is for everyone i think this has been an in, in, and a very interesting uh, conversation thanks a lot for your time at a very short notice mm-hmm. bronwyn and uh, i will introduce your work and your message to as many people as we can here in india and hopefully uh, why not leave it in the intention cloud you never know hopefully we can have a big exhibition of your work of your work in india very soon because i want to inspire uh, millions of indian students uh, art is something that is not openly talked or practiced uh, so people like you can spark 
a generation of kids at least here in india so you never know so on that note i would like to express my gratitude and have a great day ahead and we'll catch up soon again thank you so much this has been such a lovely call